Hello, welcome pen friends. I'm super excited to be here with you today and do an ink profile of this ink that I got. Uh, it's Noodler's King Philip Requiem. I'm going to hold that up so you can see this beautiful label. It is a 16 ounce bottle. That's the only way that it's available at this time. And in fact, uh, Someone from Van S hopped on my other video and explained that it was a 22 bottle limited run. And uh, when I went to their website, it was sold out. But I did nab a bottle from um, thepenoutpost.com. So you might want to check them out. And uh, let's get started here. What I really want to do first is um, really start and show you the color. And then I want to compare some other noodlers bottles and I want to show you the packaging that this came in um, this is a beautiful ink and it kind of defies description like I, I saw somewhere online someone said it was a magenta fuchsia purple and I have to agree that it's difficult to pin this into a color category and it's also really difficult with the lighting cameras devices and all of that to really capture the color but we're gonna see it in several different nibs and um, I would advise you to go over to inkswatch.com. I'm going to be getting this one over to Matt as soon as I can. And uh, it could be a few days or a week or so because I'm going to work on some, um, I'm going to try it again and see, you know, if, if I can make sure I got a steady outcome and on this, especially since it's kind of rare to get a hold of any. Um, so let's, let's hop right in and... Uh, do I'll show you how the ink came because I was dying to know as I was waiting for this to arrive how is this going to come you know I've ordered quite a bit of ink but never such a big one the bottle was sealed in a bag and then um, it was double boxed so it it was in this so it was really cushioned in all of this bubble wrap and this box here Okay, and then it was placed inside another larger box with uh, lots of bubble wrap and um, packing peanuts. And I'm just telling you this because if you're like me, you probably would wonder, you know, well, okay, I'm ordering this, but I hope it comes and I hope it's all in one piece, right? Well, yeah, it came in great shape. So next up, I just wanted to compare the ink bottle sizes, and then I'm going to put this bottle away because I'm practically terrified. You know, I want to make sure I, I handle it well. Okay, so um, this is the 16 ounce one of the King Philip. This is the... Um, I think it's four and a half ounce. Let's see. Yeah, this is the four and a half ounce bottle of Noodler's Heart of Darkness. So we, we are definitely talking about a large bottle of ink here. And then this is the, the bottle size that uh, is the most common for Noodler's, the three ounce bottle. And this is my uh, Noodler's Navajo tur uh, Turquoise, which is oh one of my favorite colors. So that's the comparison. Um, I'm not sure exactly why but i believe from listening to some of nathan's um the creator's uh video and i'll link that for you i believe it's just difficult to come by the ingredients for the sink or something and so when he can he makes it and uh 2015 was when uh it was put out but i'm going to go ahead and link you to his video because there's a lot of really interesting information and there's so much history behind this ink um about king philip's war in the northeast part of the United States, um, it, it's just, it's fascinating. I've, I've got two links for you, um, Nathan's video and also another little basic uh, read that you can look at that talks about uh, King Philip, who was the leader of the uh, tribe called, um, well, I'm going to have to just show you. Let's see. Guam. Panog, and I don't know really how to say that, but it's just really fun. And Noodler's um, labels are always, in my opinion, so interesting and fun. So um, I'm going to put the bottle away because I don't, I have, you know, like flashes of cocoa running through and dive bombing. So I'll be right back. Okay, the ink is safely put away. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to come back and show you the pens that I used for the, the writing samples. Okay, um, this is my neat little rickshaw uh, three pen case. I just love it. Okay, this is the Moonman M600S with a broad Yowo nib on it. Okay, in the violet, I think it's 
it said violet purple on the the packaging that was a gift from a pen friend for my second anniversary on youtube and then this is the pen bbs 308 in the uh, purple cloud which was also a, a gift i think this was for my birthday and it is from a pen friend it's got a fine nib on it and then i decided to go ahead and ink up my Lamy vista with the stub nib on it now this isn't my favorite nib but it was the favorite nib in the Lamy nibs of my pen friend who passed away and i've talked about her before so i thought well i wonder what it was about that combination for her let me let's just glimpse here real quick on the edge of her this is one of the letters um and so she was using sort of a similar combination actually i think in this particular letter she was using a wing sung 3008 with a very special um nib that she had done by mark bacchus but that that's she had definitely used her lamy with a stub nib a lot so these are the three pens that i used okay and we're gonna just dive right in it's gonna get splashy here <laughs> okay the first thing that i uh, wanted to see was how much water resistance this ink has and it has a lot of water resistance this is uh, 20 minutes submerged in a water bath and then dried um, you can see it definitely went through. This is Rhodia 80 GSM uh, graph paper out of one of my little square uh, notebooks. But it has a lot of permanence, so that's really interesting. And then in the initial splatter, <laughs> I did this exactly the way I do all of my others. And normally there's a little more definition with the splatters. This just really comes out like a fire hose, basically, out of the... Uh, the same uh, Goulet syringe that I always use. So I think we're gonna just go ahead and hop right into the notebooks now. Okay, first up is my Lockbee uh, A5 booklet with 68 GSM Tomoe River paper. And by the way, just keep in mind as we go along, this ink loves Tomoe River paper. So I'll just say that right off the bat, it does love it. Um, here it is in the broad Yowo nib. I did pay 12 and a half cents per mil for the ink. I don't want to talk about the overall price, but I was really excited and it was a big commemoration of my third year on YouTube. So I'm not sorry, not sorry whatsoever. And then the next one here, I had it in the Lamy 1.1 stub. I really like this combination. I've written several letters with it and I can definitely see why um, Christine liked it. And I also, it, it gave me like a lesson that I hadn't really had yet on, you've got to get the right ink into that nib of mine in order for it to flow smoothly. But it was just a really good combination. Then in the fine pen BBS, now I really liked Wurr and Klinger Casia in this nib. So I know that, um, you know, it's great. But I didn't, I thought it kind of weakened the color enough that I actually thought it transformed the color into looking almost like Monteverde Purple Rain, just for those of you that are familiar with that ink. But this ink has a lot of water resistance. Uh, the flow is very wet. It's extremely saturated, and which really is one of my uh, <laughs> yummy, you know, ink uh, loves, so. I did, did encounter some bleeding on certain papers, but we'll get into the specifics. No sheen, uh, no shading. I mean, it just, it does present, to me, it just presents uh, what you see is what you get, but it's a gorgeous color. Let's turn this over, and we see that on the back here, we have our typical ghosting and shadowing, but nothing bled through this 68 GSM, except for where I did the little water uh, test where I drew this out and then I put, you know, a paintbrush in water and just let it dry. So that, that bled back through or seeped back through, but I was very happy with this. Oh, whoa, okay, focus, focus, hello. Oh dear, I hope it wasn't like that the whole time. I'm gonna have to screen this video and I hope that we'll make it with this take, but you never know. Okay, so next up is um, 52 GSM Tomoe River paper in the Cafe Note. Uh, by N Nanami Paper Company. So here we are in the broad nib and then the, the Lamy 1.1 stub. And I put a note, I normally hate this nib, 
it's usually too dry, but oh boy, that was just, that's like one of those I could do a Chris's uh, Pip, you know, pen ink uh, combination there. Pen ink paper combination. Definitely going to go down in history. That's going to be nice. Um, I'll probably have to have another, well, depending on my reviews. Anyway, I, I am getting very chatty here. Okay, and then here it is in the fine nib. It, it does kind of change the color just a little when you drop down into the fine nib. Let's turn this over and see how it did. Okay, so we have just a little seepage on the dots. And we've got a lot of shadowing. It, it is a heavy um, ghosting or shadowing with Tomoy River paper because it's a highly saturated ink. But um, I, I find it acceptable. I wrote a letter this morning and uh, on the 52 GSM Tomoy River paper and it, I could have written on the other side. I didn't because I didn't, you know, I didn't want to uh, put the reader through that, so to speak. But it, it would have worked all right. I just, I had the paper, and so I didn't get cheapy. But anyway, okay. So this is Midori paper out of a notebook um, that I was using to write letters. Okay, here it is in the stub nib. And then in the fine nib, I don't know why I reversed my order there. That's kind of silly. And here it is in the broad nib. Now this ink seemed to really like this paper too because it didn't uh, it didn't bleed through. I, I maybe there's a what was that? That was a really heavy dot that kind of seeped through, but really that was acceptable. I I like that a lot. So Tomoe River paper and Midori paper so far that I really liked how it acted. Okay, this is a little CVS caliber notebook, a very inexpensive notebook that is very hardy. And because this ink is so saturated, it ended up being a pretty good choice for this ink. Okay, here it is in the broad nib. And I went all the way down to here with the broad nib. And then I put it in the stub nib and in the fine pen BBS right here. Um, kind of drawing a blank on how it did, so let's turn it over and look at it. Okay, so it did really well. Now, paint it on, you're going to get that seepage. But this was perfectly acceptable. Just a few dots, just like the other paper, really. Uh, just like the Midori, I would say. Um, not every ink likes this paper, but this is one that it, it's fine with. So I'm thinking some of my other Noodler's Hardy inks like that would probably uh, make me happy on the CVS caliber. Okay, next is um, Claire Fontaine. This is a little, this is my, uh, well, I've got my inky fingers in here, my little setup, and then I've got the Claire Fontaine booklet. Okay, so here we are in the broad nib, this, the Lamy stub nib, and then the pen BBS fine. You can definitely, you see what happens. It does uh, change it a little in the in the uh, lighter nib. It's still bright. Still got a lot of pizzazz there. Let's turn it over and see how it did. Okay, so then, well, I guess looking at it in the light of day, last night I was a little disappointed because th this is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. We won't worry about the top part, but I do see where it tries really hard to, and it seeps through at, at points. Okay. And then, uh, okay. So over here, we're, we're going to wait on this. I'll talk about this at the end when I do my little assessment. Uh, but, but I do want to just go on the, the back. So the stub nib did a little more serious, um, I think that's a stub nib. Yeah. The Lamy Safari with the 1.1 did kind of seep through even more and then down toward the middle. Yeah. We'll come back to this, though. I'm going to leave this notebook right here because I have quite a bit more to say later on that. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm so excited I didn't do my little intro before that I was going to bring you the comparison panel. But this is kind of one of my most exciting parts of an ink profile. Our ink of the day is right here in the middle. And in my personal collection of inks. I really couldn't find uh, anything that matches this. It, there are inks that have very similar um, innards, so to speak, but um, here it is among some inks that kind of came to mind, and I've got a whole bunch more here. And also you can go to inkswatch.com to start kind of comparing. I was trying to come up with a hex code because um, I remember there was another ink that Matt and I had a hard time getting, the Diamine Deep Magenta is difficult too to, 
to get it exactly right and we had to kind of work on that I had to try to go by what it looked like and I'm gonna have to do that with this one that's why it's not already over there but uh, let's see Mont Blanc psychedelic purple that was like the most intense ink I'd seen until I laid eyes on King Philip Requiem um, really really exciting this is and then here's the Lamy dark lilac this will just maybe help you get into the ballparks that that the ink is in this is noodler's cactus fruit eel um, and then you know side by side here I have two of my favorite purples I have several different types of purple that I love though straights pen honest ink bougainvillea purple remains one of my favorites but it's got a lot more red and so does noodler's purple mountain majesties Huh. I didn't really slow down to kind of look at that chromatography with you. Um, the chromatography on King Philip Requiem was uh, pretty hardy. It didn't move very far, and that kind of played out with the water test. Um, so there was that. I know you probably saw it, but I didn't really bring it to your attention. And then, you know, the, the dark, dark, deep uh, diamine uh, Mombato's hat, which I'll be doing for... 30 inks 30 days I actually ended up doing King Philip for day 8 of 30 inks 30 days and then here's Bay State Noodler's Bay State Concord grape as um, and that one's got a lot of <laughs> that's that's pretty darn hardy and we all kind of know we have to be cautious with those and uh, we don't want to stain a demonstrator or anything and I haven't, I don't know yet. All I know is my demonstrator has already been stained by Noodler's Rome Burning. So it was stained purple. So I just love this pen and I wanted to use it with this ink. So let's get a few others. It's, I know it's going to get a little unwieldy, but hopefully I can get through these. This is Diamine Imperial Purple. Um, that the dark kind of a traditional purple. Let's see, maybe we'll put it down here. And then uh, same with Waterman Tender Purple. It's, it's back in that kind of a, a bright and basic purple. Oh, Twisby Royal Purple kind of matched with almost, uh, not quite, but it, it very much coming out of a nib looked like the Mont Blanc uh, Psychedelic Purple. And then uh, Diatremendous Magenta Violet. I think this was another, was this the one? One of these, several of them were really hard to to get right on the camera you know it tends to brighten and lighten things up okay and then pelican 4001 violet i just couldn't find any matches to this ink um it didn't really surprise me though and then lamy violet you know it's it's down here i guess nice and purple monteverde purple rain interesting that when it when you get uh, this ink in a much much thinner nib I ended up th it, it, re it was reminiscent really okay then uh, in the darker spectrum diamine 150th anniversary purple dream I'll kind of put that up here and diamine purple pizzazz with lots of uh, gold shimmer <clears throat> J.R. Bond amethyst de laurel that's got the silver shimmer and quite a bit of hardiness in it so we'll put that there. Roar and Klinger Solferino. Okay, you know, we can tell that it's got some common ingredients, or not ingredients, but colors. Uh, Diamine Deep Magenta. This one is looking so pink. See, that's the thing. We have to take into account um, lighting and screens and what it does, the camera does, but we're giving everything the same treatment here so at least if you're familiar with something here it may help you oh this is pilot Orochizuku Yamabuto those who always want to have it you know see it compared with that okay beautiful ink noodlers um uh oh I don't remember how to pronounce this and my cheat sheet is somewhere else again the camera's playing tricks on it well, that kind of reminds me of the uh, cactus fruit eel. And this is a, a kind of cactus, I think. Someone told me how to pronounce that, and I've already forgotten. And then this is Sitz Kruznok, Kruznok Dark Orchid, which kind of reminds me kind of down here in this area. Okay, that was a little bit... <laughs> that was a little bit much, but hopefully this helps you a little bit. Oh, and I wanted to mention that I did... I read on um, Fountain Pen Network that someone said that this ink, King Philip, is close to Diamine Flowers Bougainvillea, but I can't 
confirm or deny that. I don't have a, a sample of that yet. And also they mentioned Tybaldi Pink. And I'll put this in the description box, but I haven't seen that one either. So very interesting. Okay, so what did I think of this ink? Let's get our little booklet back. Okay, so I kind of followed that same format because I've already filled up my little notebook from Brian at the pen thing. I followed the same basic uh, format from that book because I'm re realizing it's kind of useful for us. Okay, so very nice. Saturation, I gave it a 10. It's very saturated, King Philip is. Flow, I gave it a 9. I mean, I don't, I don't know whether there's anything that flows more, but it definitely was way up there. Uh, I didn't see any shading. Uh, bleeding was a factor on some of the paper. And maybe I was a little harsh because it's more like seepage. And some people don't worry about using the back of the paper. So I, I need to probably realize that that won't be the same. Um, this is very subjective. You might not feel the same way about it. Feathering. Oh, I didn't really mention it, but... Um, feathering. See, I was using really good paper... And just like, let me try to hold that real close. At times, see my eyesight's not really good enough, but at times I would see where I thought it was spreading, but I don't know. And so I did mark it, oh, I marked it kind of high for feathering. The, you know, the jury's still out and I'm ongoingly using this. So uh, sometimes I look back like two days later and I say, what, you know, uh, it wasn't a factor so much on the good paper, definitely not on the Tamoy River paper. Dry time, well, I just don't, I don't hassle with that much. No sheen, no halo, no shimmer. I just keep um, like a blotter paper handy is what I do. Uh, no shimmer, okay. Cost per milliliter, 12 and a half cents. Overall, I give it a nine. I love this ink. I love it for the color. I love it for the connection to my pen friend, um, Christine, who taught me so much. And uh, I miss her. And I just, uh, the history of the ink and the whole, whoops, oh my goodness, it's falling apart. The whole big picture, I just really love this ink. Um, there was more. <laughs> I don't know why I stopped. <laughs> okay, so I was going to go on the back. This is the Claire Fontaine uh, 90 GSM. And you can decide for yourself whether you think, I think it's just seepage, but I, stuff like that kind of annoys me. So I would probably stay with the Tamoy River paper or the Midori paper for this ink. And then over here, oh yeah, I wanted to give you like the final summary, or more or less, in my opinion, at this point with this ink. Um, I like the color. I love the saturation. I love the history. I, I'm still reading and uh, even my husband got interested and said, oh, we should order the book. But I think I told him I found it in the public domain because of uh, Nathan mentioning it in his video. So you can read all you want without having to buy it. Um, there's, they're over a hundred years old, the book, and it's really cool. So the history, um, I, the connection to my pen friend, the fact that it has all that water resistance, um, it's a factor that I've come to love more about inks. Not every single time do I want to uh, be inked up with one like this because I think maybe pen maintenance wise you have to be a little more careful, a lot more careful probably. Um, and then it's great on Tamoy River paper which happens to be my number one choice for letter writing. Along with CVS Caliber, oddly as that sounds, because they're on opposite ends of the price range, but um, I use both of those, especially when the ink will flow on that CVS Caliber. So things I don't like, it is a bummer that it's only available in the 16 ounce, um, and, and that it's limited edition, so I probably should have kind of noted that. 16 ounce and then LE. I, he was holding a bottle of three ounce bottle. So I think maybe back in 2015, it was a different deal. Um, now, some of the seepage and bleeding kind of bothered me a little bit. Uh, you know, I think I'm putting feathering because, because of the fact that I'm pretty sure you can't get away with it on most cheap papers. I mean, there's, it's pretty... Um, but I shouldn't really be putting that because I haven't... I just decided not to put it on like really cheap paper. There's no need to do that. Um, and I put note, Midori paper held this ink quite well. I wonder about G. Lalo. Okay, so in addition to Tamoy River paper, 
uh, definitely the I thought the Midori paper that was really that was really really good because even the broad nib only little dots here and there and I think you could fully get away with writing on the back of that so I hope this gives you uh, enough information to really kind of get a picture of the ink and um, at the ink availability and how it's coming out changes daily so I can't sit here and say well there's no place to buy a sample because there could be today I, I didn't go in today to check because uh, somebody bought the other 21 bottles and also um, to the extent of my ability with my pen allowance and my you know ability to share this ink I'll be sharing the ink too um, I can't I can't handle another giveaway because I just can't do that there's lots of little reasons for that and um, anyway but that's so we, we'll talk about that another day when I can go face to face with you but uh, hopefully this is enough for you to to know where it falls and I'll continue to study to see if I can find something that looks closer than any of the ones that I have to it but I thought there was quite a bit of uh, interest in a in a profile or a review on this ink so I decided to jump right in um, and put it through the paces that I always do. So let me know, what do you think? I mean, I, I think that I could get away with buying this uh, 16 ounce bottle this time because I was celebrating a three year anniversary on YouTube and I, I know that I have a lot of pen friends and though it may take me a long time to, you know, to mail out little samples of bottles and so forth because the scale of it is kind of scary. Um, even so, I'm, I'm really excited and I think if it's the craziest thing I, I ever do in my fountain pen uh, hobby, it certainly is memorable to me <laughs> already. I'll never forget this because I never thought that I would actually uh, come upon even a two mil sample to play with and uh, I was uh, always admiring how it looked in the letters um, from my friend and I think, I think there was another pen friend too that wrote with with the ink so you know it was out there for a while in 2015 so I hope you enjoyed this let me know in the comments um, what you think and uh, have a great day and I'd love to, always love to read your comments and respond bye for now